Hello and thanks for joining. Today's tutorial is going to be for Photoshop Elements version 11 and this is going to be tutorial number two about working with the organizer. So this is what your main screen of the organizer should look like. Uh, you've got your main room over here and you notice up top you've got several tabs or rooms to go to. So the first one here in the media room, if you're on all media, you should have all of your um, photos that you've previously imported into this list. One thing you can do is you can zoom in and out. You can make them smaller, larger, whatever you're comfortable with, you know, number per row or whatnot. So that's down here on the bottom right. Uh, some other things are you can rate these in here. So I could put, uh, you know, three stars for this one and three stars for that one and whatever. Um, five stars, four stars for this one. And that'll, um, if you decide to categorize them like that. So over here, you'll notice on the right hand side, you've got several keywords and, and there's several things called smart tags. So these keywords are just a way of categorizing photos. So there's some default categories here and then you can, you can create your own categories. And then these smart tags are things that get applied automatically by Photoshop if you choose to let Photoshop do that. So one quick thing about smart tags is if you do not want them turned on automatically, meaning Photoshop to apply these like high quality or low quality to your photos, um, you should go in here to under edit, go to preferences, and then go to media analysis, and then make sure this box is unchecked, analyze media for smart tags automatically. Most people probably prefer it that way. Some people might like it, um, but it can be a little cumbersome to remove these smart tags later um, if you do leave that option turned on. So there's also, in addition to keywords, there's lots of ways to categorize um, within Photoshop Elements. So there's people, there's places, and there's events. So if we go under people, you'll notice I've got several um, categories already. If you notice over here, you just if you if you hover if you just um, click or hover over it, you move your mouse around here, you'll notice that there's multiple pictures. So this is a stack of photos. So you see here, if I double click it, it'll expand and show me all the pictures in that category. Over here, I've only got one picture in that category, so I'm going to click back. Uh, so I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to show you how to tag people. I'm going to do a brand new import. I'm going to do import from files. And then I have in my temp folder here, I have, I just downloaded some pictures of Jennifer Aniston from the internet. So I'm going to say get media. And I can go over here and I take my selection. I can just click add people. It'll analyze your media and if it comes up and, and sees who it is it will it will um, apply it and you can change it if it's incorrect for for whatever reason this one's not recognized so I'm gonna go ahead and assign um, Aniston to it so by the way all of your previous if I were to start typing B you'd see I could choose Becky or Bob but I know um, so there's um, the tag for Aniston so I'm gonna go ahead and click Save and now if I go back to people now I should have four photos in here. So I can do the same thing with places. I can tag um, photos by places. So one thing I can do, if I go over here to media and I choose, uh, let's go to, let's go to this photo here of this boating picture. And I'm going to go ahead and say, add a place. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in the city. Cape Canaveral, Florida, and I'm going to say search. Alright, so I select it. It brings me to a map. I can drag this wherever I want to. So I'm going to put it right here. And then I'm going to click the checkbox to place media there. So now I say done. Now if I go to my places, you see I've got four down here in Aruba. I've got two in Washington, D.C. I've got one in um, Cape Canaveral and I've got two in San Francisco and you can see it highlights them over here so that's how you use um, places and then events um, you can see I created a fishing trip folder I created a sailing um, grouping here and you see if I click it there's two um, two there so events work the same way 
I can go ahead and I can um, I can highlight that photo and I can say add event and whoop sorry oh sorry yeah here it is so I go over here add event and I can call it uh, baseball game all right and the start date and the end date and I could say done and then if I go over here to events now you can see I could categorize all the pictures from the baseball game that that uh, we went to all right so I'm gonna go back to media and I'm gonna talk about these keywords for a minute so over here under keywords you've got some default categories uh, I'm gonna go ahead go ahead and click a new category here so we could say rather than putting in an event you could say um, I don't know, we could call it a pets category. And you can choose your category to put it underneath one of these, or I'm just going to put it under other. I'm going to say OK. So now you've got over here um, a pets category. So let's say you drag, you can do you can do this a couple different ways. You can just drag the pets icon over to this one, and it'll put it right on there as one option of, of doing it. Now, if I highlight these um, photos, you can see something down here in the bottom right. You can see the tags or keywords that are applied to it. So I can go over here, highlight the, the cat here, and you see it's under pets. If I want to remove that, I can either right click it down here and say remove pets keyword tag, or I can right click that photo, and you'll see remove keyword tag there, pets. Okay, likewise, I could go over here, click on Jennifer Aniston's picture here and say remove and remove from that category. Now, um, if I want to search and group things by um, these tags or people, I could go over here and I could say show me all the pictures of Aniston and you'll see what will happen. It'll come up and it'll just list those three. Or I could go over here, I could delete that and say show me Becky and you see there's one picture of Becky but then I could also go over here there's a comma there now and now I could go over here and say show me pictures of Ann Bob and I click Bob and they're both in the same photo so they would show up so another thing that you can look at over here is something called the information column and so if I look at the information column I'm gonna go ahead and choose choose this one here so I go under information and you see it's got a name you know if you put a caption there it'll be there it'll tell you the size of it what date it was taken um, it'll go under metadata you can go under metadata and it'll give you some information about it what's the make of the camera in Olympus what's the model of the camera 720 SW what's the ISO what's the f-stop um, what are all those settings then I can go under history and you see there's no history there go over here to this photo you'll notice over here there's a little indicator that there's a version set here so I can click this arrow over here and that means there's multiple versions of edits of that file of that photo so I'm gonna go over here and show you okay so the information on this so there's not really a lot of metadata because it's just a you know a download I found on the internet and then if I go under history you'll notice here that it shows me my edits for the history so one thing I wanted to um, point out is that the history by default saves up to 50 versions. If for some reason you want more or less than that, you can go into the editor. I'll go ahead and kick that off right now, and I'll quickly show you how to um, edit the number of files in history. So I'm going to go ahead and say Edit, Preferences, and then I can go over here to uh, Performance and then in here I can change the history states from 50 to 20 or 60 or whatever number I would like 50 is a pretty big number so it's a uh, hundred percent up to you so I'm gonna go ahead and go back into the um, into the organizer you notice over here it says edit in progress and that's because I have that file opened within the editor so I either need to save it or, or cancel out of it and now you notice that goes away Okay, so now if I wanted to share information with someone, I would just go under share. I could say, as an example, I could do it to YouTube or Facebook, but I could go to email attachments. And then I could go over here and I could uh, just drag and drop, uh, I don't know, I'll drag this one in here. And I could drag uh, this one in here. And I could go ahead and click next. 
and then it would uh, it would bring up my email um, email application and attach it and so forth. So a couple other quick things that I want to share with you are these tags, by the way, are automatically the default is to um, tag them with the date. So and you can change those settings if you want to. Um, the other thing is I want to talk about albums real quickly. So if you want to create an album, you just go under albums and hit the plus sign. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel over here to get out of that sharing. Uh, go under album, click the plus sign. And over here, you get to add new album, and we're going to call this tutorial. Right, and we can go ahead and just drag and drop content in there. So I can do it. Uh, let's drag these these eight over. I just selected them with the mouse, and I just drag them over like that. Okay, so the last thing I want to share with you today is about how to back up your catalog. And the catalog is your is your is your um, basically a database of your photos. So you go under File, Backup Catalog. You can either do a full backup or an incremental backup. So let's assume we're going to do a full, and then you go over here and you select where you're going to put it, and and um, so you could have it on a DVD, you could call it whatever you want to, put it on a you know an external drive. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel and that's going to default to the one catalog that I have but if you had multiple catalogs you could choose um, which one you wanted to back up over here I just have this default one my catalog the current one but you could create catalogs by year by half year by event or whatever you would like to do um, to keep your catalogs um, to a somewhat of a reasonable size and you can also convert um, older catalogs in here too so that's what I wanted to share with you. Thanks for joining. On tutorial number three, we're going to um, start to get into editing. Thanks. Take care.